sure is. Uh, oh, I see. Here it is. Maybe. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to give you an overview of uh, anti aging and regenerative medicine to touch on a bit of what you've seen from some of the other lectures, but also to give you a feel for where this industry has began, where it's headed, and what we can look to in the future. You know, we're all trying to combat this aging process, and there's some really good examples of people that just don't stop. This is Banana Joe. He's 85 years old, barefoot water skiing, and we'll have the water skis out later after lunch. You guys can give this a shot. Anti-aging is a very exciting field because we take so much of new technology, traditional medicine, alternative medicine. We're interested in what works. You know, sometimes people ask me, you know, well, what do you think of this or what do you think of this technology or that technology? And we're really, really, we're very proactive and we're looking at what technologies can work. We look for things that are evidence-based, hard science, but also have an open mind into other things that may not be as hardcore as as evidence-based as of yet, because sometimes things that we thought in the past were not really valid in the future then do turn up to be so much so. If you look at uh, Professor Samuel Weiss, who is a doctor who talked about hand washing, you know, when he was talking about hand washing, they used to go in the OB wards and deliver one baby after the other without washing their hands. And they thought he was crazy when they said that. Then you had uh, Dr. Watson and Marshall, who came up with the theory of H. pylori, that there was a bacterium that caused peptic ulcer disease. And for 19, 20 years, he and his colleagues were ridiculed for thinking that there could be a bacterium causing this, and they won the 2005 Nobel Prize after 20 years of abuse. So same thing in anti-aging. You know, we're coming up with a lot of new concepts, and people give us the same type of opposition. And really, anti-aging is really quite simple, because what we're looking at is maximum peak performance. We're looking at what works, and one way to find what works is to look at simple things in life, things that are very evident to us, things that, you know, really are quite clear. Well, one of the things that's quite clear, we know in sports medicine, uh, this is uh, President Bush being eaten. Uh, I don't know if you uh, saw that before. This isn't a, we, we're trying to get a bigger shark, though, because we're trying to get the whole cabinet and Senate at the same time. Uh, that was just in Indonesia, and uh, I was surfing, and I took this picture before uh, we ate him for lunch. Well, you know, really what we look at in anti-aging medicine is changing the paradigm of what we think it means to grow old. That's where the challenge comes. You know, many people say, well, I don't want to live to be 80 or 90 years old because I'm going to be like this. I'm going to have loss of bone mass and muscle mass and cognition. So I don't want to be old. And, you know, many times you'll say to somebody, well, who wants to live to be 90? Well, somebody who's 89. They really don't care until they're almost there. In fact, I'll ask you guys, who wants to live to be 80? Leave your hand up or I have to kill you. 80, 90. Keep your hands up if you want to stay alive. 95, 100. 110, come on, some hardcore, 120, 120 looking like you're 3,500 billion cash, nobody knows where it was, you can have sex 10 times a day, who wants to be alive? Okay, now everybody wants to be alive. I changed your mindset of what it means to be old. Okay, and so today, this is not really what's considered old. We really have these type of things. Dr. Klatt showed some of the same slide. Really, where do we get this from? Well, we get this really from our senior athletes. This is Sophia Loren. This photograph was taken at the age of 70. At the age of 71, she decided to pose for a calendar wearing nothing but a pair of earrings, which is not something we would think of as a 71-year-old. So we have a different mindset of what it means to be old. Now, in the animal kingdom, there are no old animals. Either you eat someone or they eat you. There are no retired homes for monkeys and bears and tigers. You know, you don't have old animals. They just don't make it. Well, in the human kingdom, however, we have a different situation going on. We can get to live longer, and we're seeing this in this, these demographic slides were demonstrated by a number of the speakers and will be uh, over the course of the remainder of the day, that we are living a lot longer. We're living a lot healthier. And this is a really prime example of different aging processes. On your left is a Tibetan monk, low-stress lifestyle, stays out of the sun, vegetarian diet. In fact, eats most of the type of foods that are prepared by Heather and her team here, all bio, uh, you know, biologically perfect foods. And so on. The, but, and that person is 74 years old. Now, the Peruvian Indians on your right 
high sun exposure, high stress lifestyle, goes out at London at night a lot by, uh, by the party district, and at the age of 47, you can see that partying in London could really wear you out. So we went into, uh, and, and some of the other speakers also spoke to them, what is anti-aging medicine? It's not a pill, it's not a magic potion. Anti-aging medicine is a scientific approach to medical care. It's a brand new medical specialty that's been around for about 14 years. It's evidence-based, it's orderly, it's an orderly process of scientific evaluation. It's synergistic in that it tries to take the multidisciplinary, multi-therapeutic modalities that are available to us and of course it is well documented in the peer review literature. So the strict definition of anti-aging medicine is a medical specialty founded on the application of advanced scientific and medical technologies for early detection, prevention, treatment, and reversal of age-related dysfunction, disorders, and disease. And you've seen this during this terrific series of lectures you've seen over this weekend on everything from radiologic early diagnostics of disease, surgical interventions, different types of hormonal interventions, to everything from topicals to orals. All these things are part of anti-aging medicine, whether it be aesthetic medicine, sports medicine. So anti-aging medicine is based on the sound scientific principles of health. So it's a euphemism for many other words that we know as anti-aging medicine. Some people call it longevity medicine or successful aging or healthy aging, optimal aging, age management. You know, we first started the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine and actually started this field back in 1992. We had 35 doctors at our first conference in two booths. And we had, came up with that term, they said anti-aging, that's so negative. I mean, well, what should we call it? Pro-death, pro-drop dead, get polio? What do you want us to call it? Anti-aging, and that's why you have the British Society of Anti-Aging Medicine, the American Academy, the German Society of Anti-Aging Medicine. This is a term that is emotionally grabbed hold all around the world. We have the World Anti-Aging Academy of Medicine. Heather Bertengi is, is a director of this group, and this group is going to be getting very active globally, and it's an offshoot of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. So anti-aging is really the term, and we expand it a bit to say anti-aging or regenerative medicine. Uh, and in this, what we do is we look at all the different components, and you've been educated on these things over the course of the weekend, that we look at the hormonal profiles and the physiologic profiles and everything from the genomics to the psychologic profiles, doing everything we can to try and push that genetic clock. We want to try and continue to look at the theories of aging and how can we integrate in the knowledge we have, the technologies we have to change the aging process. You've had some lecturers talk to you about the neuroendocrine theory of aging. You know, this theory that as our hormones drop, it sends a chemical message to the cells in our body saying this is an old body can start breaking down. And the reason we do hormone replacement is in essence to trick the body cells into still thinking they're young. In essence, reprogramming. You have the free radical theory of aging where some of the scientists over the weekend have spoke about why we take antioxidant vitamins or free radical scavengers. We do this to try and grab those free electrons and squelch this biochemical fire because in essence our bodies are metal iron bridges. We rust. We biochemically break down and we throw off these free electrons. We throw off these free radicals so we try and counteract that free radical biochemical fire that break down through the use of antioxidants and other things. And there have been changes in medicine, like the Hayflick limit, that there were just so many divisions a cell would go to, and that was it. That's been thrown out and superseded. So, so many theories of aging that have been discussed. Uh, calorie restriction has been discussed. Where, But you ever see somebody who's really calorie-restricted diet? They look miserable. They're like runners. They're always angry. You know, they're always like, they've got a bad look on their face. You look at the marathon guys at the end of 26 months. Do they look happy? And they're finished 26 months. I was at a medical conference in Hawaii uh, many years ago. I was here to lecture for the sports medicine division. And the guy said, hey, why don't you try and run the race? 26 miles. Are you nuts? Well, I said, okay, I'll try. These little skinny guys could do it. i got to try it too. Let me tell you, I put enough Vaseline and sunscreen that if I fell, I could have slid 22 miles. Finished, I was so happy. I never experienced muscle soreness like that in my life. I have great new respect for runners. So the goal here is to shift the goal to the right. And so uh, we look at biomarkers. We look at our functional biomarkers of muscles and joints and bones as level one.